please rise? Can you welcome your neighbor? Welcome your neighbor. Thank God for their life, for being in church this morning. Welcome them, welcome them, appreciate them. Appreciate them, the love of God. We thank God for everyone's life here this morning. We appreciate you. We love you. We thank God for your life. We thank God for what God is doing in your life. Let's thank God for life. Let's thank God for being here this morning. Let's thank God for his love and kindness. Let's thank God for his protection. Let's thank God because our God is a faithful God. Appreciate him. Appreciate God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for your loved ones. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your business. Thank God even for that thing that is not working in your life yet. Just thank God because God is aware of everything. Just appreciate him for his love, for his kindness. Our God is a good God. We appreciate you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for this life. Thank you for this breath of life. Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit. We appreciate you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. Holy Ghost, come and take your place, Holy Come and take your place. If you mean it, I want you to sing that song. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. Come and take your place, O oh Lord. Oh Holy Ghost, come and take your place in our midst this morning. Holy Ghost, take your place in our life, Almighty God. Holy Ghost, fill us up, Lord Jesus. Oh, we need more of you, Jesus, this morning. We need you, oh Lord. Oh, we appreciate you, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, we need you. Holy Spirit, oh, move it now. Eh, harama sikir gaga. Oh, again, Spirit, move over me. Holy Spirit, move me now. Ah, my life whole again. Spirit, move. of the Lord move all over us this morning. In the name of Jesus, Father Lord God, move in our lives, Almighty God. Oh, showcase us, Lord God, with your power. Holy Spirit, we need you this morning. 
Holy Masiri Bakuri Gazendaria. Feel each and every one of us, Almighty God, this morning. I'm a second Gaston Mobo Shendaria. We are not going to go back the same again this morning in the name of Jesus. Rama Sekeria, fill us up, Lord Jesus, with your power and with your anointing, Lord. A fresh anointing over us this morning. In the name of Jesus. Rama Sekeria, Sekeria, Sondolobo Shendaria. Rabba, Baba, Baba, Sendaria. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Fill my cup, I lift it up, Lord. Come and take this testing of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Fill my cup. Lord, this morning, Lord, fill our cup, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rama Sekeri Gazeria, let it be overflowing in the mighty name of Jesus. Rama Sondo Robo Shenderia, Rama Bakasiri Bakuntari Gazegeria, Rima Siri Bakuri Gazondo Robo Shenderia. Oh, Father, Lord, fill us up, Lord Jesus. We need you, Lord Jesus, Ragazegeria. In a new way, in a new dimension. Let your power, let the Holy Spirit pour out on us, Almighty God. Pour upon us, Lord Jesus, this morning. Oh, fill us up, Lord Jesus. Fill our cup, Lord Jesus. We lift it up to you this morning. Rama Sekeria, Rama Kasendia, Rama Sondolobo, fill us up, Lord Jesus. Rima Sekeria, Raka Sondolobo, Hola Gagata, Hola Masekeria. Father, Lord God, this morning, Almighty God, fill up this message in the name of Jesus. Rama Sondolobo Shekeria, Rama Baba, Rimo Sekeria, as a message, as it keeps coming, Lord Jesus. Fill our heart with your power. Fill our heart with your word. Lift us up, Almighty God. Rama Sondolo Boshenia. Rama Sekeria. Father, Lord God, this morning, there shall be miracles, Almighty God. Rama Sekeria. There shall be impartations, Almighty Father. There shall be encounters, Lord God. In the name of Jesus, Rama Sekeria. Visit us afresh, Almighty Father. Riba Kakaka. Rimo Sendia. Oh, fill us up, Lord Jesus. Oh, fill up us, Lord Jesus. Rama Sondo Boshenia. Riba Kakaka. Oh, Rama Sondo Boshenia. Oh, Rima Sekeriga Sekeria. Rimo Sekeriga Sondo. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Rama Sondo Boshenia. Fill it up and make me whole. One more time, Lord Jesus. Fill my cup. Somebody shout hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Come on. Come on. Hey.
of the Most High. We shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We will say of the Lord, He is our refuge and our fortress. Our God in Him shall we trust. Surely He will deliver us from the snare of the fowler and from every perilous pestilence. He will cover us with His feathers and under His wings shall we take refuge. His truth shall be our shield and our buckler. We shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at our side, ten thousand at our right hand, but it shall not come near us. Only with our eyes shall we look and see the reward of the wicked. Because we have made the Lord our refuge, even the Most High, our dwelling place, no evil shall befall us, nor shall any plague come near our dwelling place. For he will give his angels charge over us to keep us in all our ways. In their hands they shall bear us up, lest we dash our foot against a stone. We shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, upon the young lion and the serpent shall we trample under our feet. Because we have set our love upon him, therefore he will deliver us. He will set us up on high because we have known his name. We will call upon him and he will answer us. He will be with us in trouble. He will deliver us and honor us. With long life will he satisfy us and show us his salvation. Hallelujah. How many of you know that God is the greatest God? Tell your neighbor, my God is the greatest God. Hallelujah. Everybody let's dance. Come on. Yeah. Everybody to the left. To the right. To the left. To the right. right. To the left. Yeah. Oh, the power in your hands, Jehovah. And all creations for you proclaim your majesty. Nation bound and not to throne, proclaim that you reign. You reign. Hey, you hold your power in your hands, Jehovah. No creations will proclaim your majesty. The nations bound and not to throne, proclaim that you.
Us. The Bible says we should pray without ceasing. Let us not be discouraged. Look at Nigeria and driving to church this morning, just looked across the road. And there was this ever long queue for fuel by Northwest. And I said this was about 6 30. I said, For goodness sake, what time did these people get here? Everywhere you look, there are long queues and, you know, there's just so much. Enough to discourage one. But no, we will not be discouraged. Keep praying. Confident that our God hears. He answers. And indeed, we will see those answers in Jesus' name. I'm going to be anchoring our prayers this morning as we pray for the nation, as we pray for the church. On Lamentations chapter 3, verses 22 and 23. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning and great is thy faithfulness. Another version says the steadfast love of the Lord endures forever. Therefore we would not be consumed. Nigeria will not be consumed in Jesus' name. We look around us, it's as if, where, where is the way forward? We hear all sorts of assertions, stories. I know Nigerians, they're wonderful people. Everybody will be saying this as if they are, they are there. As if they are the ones. God knows what's going on. But we definitely need God. And I want to us to anchor our prayers this morning on the mercies of God. I just want us to say, Father, just have mercy upon this land. Have mercy upon the people because it's the people that are going through the hardship and the suffering. It's incredible what people are going through. We're resilient people but it doesn't have to be this way. Could we rise to our feet this morning? Anchoring our prayers on the fact that Nigeria will not be consumed because of the mercies of God. And we're confident because his mercies are new every morning. We cannot exhaust the mercies of God. The Bible says the Lord delights in showing us mercy. The Lord delights. It gives him pleasure to show mercy to his own. I want us to begin to pray in this place and just say, Father, have mercy. Because of your mercies, Nigeria will not be consumed. Nigeria will not be consumed. Nigeria will not be consumed by hardship. Nigeria will not be consumed by evil and danger and wickedness. 
and violence. Nigeria will not be consumed by men that do not fear God. Nigeria will not be consumed by any ill the enemy has planned. Nigeria will not be consumed. And it is only because of the mercies of God that we will not be consumed. Indeed, his mercies are new every morning. His compassions will not fail towards us. Great is his faithfulness. Begin to pray in the spirit this morning. Say, Father, have mercy upon this nation. Oh, we, we are your people and we cry out for mercy. Father, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. As a nation, we have sinned against you. As a nation, we have gone our own way. That's why we're going through all we're going through. We may lay blame here and there. But as a nation, we have not lived as we're supposed to have lived. Father, we ask for mercy this morning. Have mercy upon this land. Because of your mercy, Nigeria will not be consumed by evil. Nigeria will not be consumed by hardship and poverty. Nigeria will not be consumed by violence. Nigeria will not be consumed by darkness. Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy upon this land. Oh, we thank you that we cannot exhaust your mercy. Because your mercies are new every morning. Every morning we have a fresh dose of mercy. Have mercy upon this land. Father, we want to see your mighty hand of intervention. We want to see your power made manifest in Nigeria. Father, have mercy on the people. There's so much hardship and suffering and difficulty. Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Oh, riaba kaya baka seya basa ya basa se isa isa. Oh, riaba kasi I can hear you pray. Mercy, Lord. 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 Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. Boya baria kase ya basi ya basa se. Have mercy upon us concerning our security. Have mercy upon us concerning our economy. Have mercy upon us concerning all our utilities, fuel, electricity. Every sector, health, education. Father, have mercy. Mercy, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name. You see, mercy, the attribute of God that is mercy is not a weak attribute. It's not an attribute of weakness at all. The Bible says his compassions fail not. Compassion is the action part of mercy. Whenever God showed mercy in the Bible, there was a divine intervention. There was a change. There was a switch. When blind Bartimaeus cried out and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy upon me. His blindness was removed. Mercy is not weak. Mercy is the power of God that causes a change. I want us to know that as we pray this morning, you see, our prayers are stored up. There's a warehouse of prayers. Don't ever think any prayer goes to waste. No. God hears and answers every prayer. That is a promise we have in the Bible. That he will always hear and he would always answer. And a cry for mercy always touches God. And there will be a performance. The mercy of God on the other hand is vengeance to his enemies. When the children of Israel were going through the Red Sea. And throughout their sojourn before they got to the promised land. The Bible records that the Lord was a pillar of cloud. As he gave them light to the enemy, it was darkness and cold. Mercy is a double-edged sword. For the children of God and for those of us that cry out for mercy, it's for our advantage. But don't be deceived. That's a mercy. It's vengeance to our enemies. I can assure you as we cry to the Lord for mercy one more time this morning for our nation Nigeria. You know, you can look at yourself and I can assure you everybody is feeling it one way or the other. But for some, it's really bad. It's really bad. And it does not have to be this way. We don't have to suffer to get fuel. We don't have to, I mean, in my estate, for instance, our transformer has been bad for two weeks. 
And I had to go to the Nepal office and said, this is an emergency. The district head was telling me he just got the report on Friday. I said, for something that has happened two weeks ago. It's an emergency. So, you know, and I look at myself, I took at, you know, just think deep. And you can imagine the suffering and hardship of others. I want us to pray. No matter where you're at, maybe you're comfortable and fine, there's no problem, that's fine. But I can assure you that if you think there's no problem, that itself is a problem. Because there are problems. So I want us to cry out. Father, upon this land, have mercy. Let us see your power of intervention. Let it be clear that it is the Lord that has arisen. Despite and in spite of man, despite and in spite of whatever man may have as his agenda, the overriding mercy of God, let it visit this land. Father, have mercy. That same mercy, Father, for every enemy of the peace and the rest of this nation, let your vengeance visit them. Let your wrath visit them. Let your anger visit them. Your Bible says you are angry with the wicked man every day. Father, let them be recipients of that anger. Let it be clear that you are angry with them. Father, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy Lord. Have mercy. Upon this land, have mercy upon the people. Father, have mercy upon the people. Have mercy upon the people. Have mercy. Your compassions fail not. Let us see your mighty hand. Let us see your mighty hand. Let us see your mighty hand in the lives of the people. Bring relief. Bring peace. Bring comfort. Bring solution for the sake of your people. Father, have mercy. Father, have mercy. And for the wicked, Lord, they will have no rest. Evil will slay the wicked. They will have no rest. Evil will slay the wicked. We say they will have no rest. Evil will slay the wicked. We say they will have no rest. Evil will slay the wicked. Father, have mercy on your people. We cry out for your mighty hand of intervention this morning. Father, have mercy. I want you to now pray for yourself. I want us to lift up every family in the Fountain of Life Church. God knows us all by name. Every family. God knows us by name. I want us to say, Father, have mercy upon every family. Visit every family in this house with your mercy. This week, let us be recipients of your mercy. Every family in the Fountain of Life Church. Wherever the mercy is required, whatever that will translate to, whatever divine intervention is required for every family. Father, we lift up every family in the Fountain of Life Church this morning. Father, have mercy. Visit us all with your mercy. Visit the sick with your healing power. Visit with provision and abundance. Visit with your mighty hand of intervention for every situation. Father, have mercy. Wipe away the tears of your children. Grant peace where there's so much trouble. Father, have mercy. Fight every enemy of us, your children. Fight ruthlessly every enemy of this house. Visit every enemy of this house with your vengeance. But Father, show us your mercy. Have mercy, Lord. Your mercy will triumph over every judgment against this land. Your mercy will triumph over every judgment against this house. Your mercy will triumph over every judgment against any family or any one of us. Have mercy, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For we have received your mercy by faith. In Jesus' name. You may please be seated. The election is pretty close. But let me assure you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, there will be a change. Not a change in the sense that politicians see it. The God that still rules in the affairs of men will intervene. In the name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you. Take advantage of the extended um, PVC collection thing. Please do, please do. Ask God for grace. Just go there. And then go vote 
for the one that the Holy Ghost is telling you to vote for. Remember, God rules in the affairs of men. And we are deciding to exercise our faith in agreement. And if he has said it, that if you agree concerning such I will do it, then we are open. We believe him. So go cast your vote. This morning on Fountain News, Morning Glory resumes on February 11. Bishop Scott prays this Thursday and collection of items for the less privileged holds next Sunday. Good morning and welcome to this episode of Fountain News. I am Iboro Tonya Edet. Now before the announcements for this week, here are highlights of a major event that happened in this church last week. The third edition of the leadership training with Pastor Taiwo Dukoya held last Tuesday on site and was streamed live. In attendance were young and old ministers from different churches and ministries. Pastor Taiwo said, among other things, that one hallmark of true leadership is being able to pass along what has been learned over time to emerging leaders. He noted that the success of any leader is dependent on having the right mindset and answered questions on communion administration, cybercrime among teens, attitudes towards the divine call, and the need for ministers to make time for leisure, among others. The date for the next meeting will be announced in due course. Morning Glory resumes on site on Saturday, February 11 at 7.30 a.m. Please come along with your family and friends to pray, praise, and worship. The general evangelism for the month will take place immediately after the Morning Glory. Are you a married man? Join other married men for the February online one-hour intercessory prayer meeting coming up this Thursday. Now the Zoom app access code is 372-677-8391. And the passcode is Bishop. It promises to be a great time in God's presence. Now prayer points should please be sent to 0803-301-8482. Did you know that reading a devotional can help you dig deeper into God's word and find practical ways to apply lessons from scripture to your life? You can pick up copies of Pastor Taiwo Dukoya's daily devotional, 120 Days of Victory and 121 Days of Blessings at the bookshop for yourself and someone you care about after this service. Collection of items for the less privileged by the Hope Center will resume next Sunday, that is February 5, at the Fountain Gardens after the first service. Please ensure the items you want to drop off are in very good condition. Clothing items should be washed, ironed, and neatly packed. God bless you as you continue to minister to those in need. A special meeting of all Federal Road Safety Corps Special Marshals of Unit 127, the Fountain of Life Church, holds today immediately after the first service. Venue is the front of the Children's Church main building. Please note this meeting is compulsory for all Unit 127 Special Marshals. This is from the Home Fellowship Department. The department provides opportunities for church members to meet for an hour of prayer, worship, and sharing of the word every Sunday evening. The fellowship has a mandate in 2023 to reach more people by expanding to more areas. To accomplish this task, the fellowship needs the partnership of church members who are willing to allow their homes to be used as centers for this divine and noble task. Now, if you live in Ikorodu, Leki, or Surulere and are willing to be a host in your area, please visit the information desk immediately after the service to, to connect with the fellowship's representatives for more details. Now, if you live in other areas and are willing to host a Fountain Home Fellowship, please visit the information desk also after the service. The vision is to ensure that there is a home fellowship center close to every fountaineer. Together, we can make it happen. There will be a special love feast today for those who gave their lives to Christ in December 2022, especially converts from the last watch night service venue is a multi-purpose hall. The Fountain Sports Club invites you to their first aerobic exercise this year, holding this Saturday at 6.30 a.m. The other sessions in February will hold on the 11th and the 18th. Venue is the Fountain Garden, Silupeju. Please 
come along with your friends and loved ones to burn off all the calories acquired during the festive season. Today is Family Sunday, so there is no on-site or online children's church. Children who are in church should please stay with their parents or guardians. And because it's Family Sunday, there will be the first baby dedication for this year towards the end of the second service. So if you are in church to dedicate your baby, please carry the baby yourself when it is time to step out and have a bottle of anointing oil with you. You will be told what to do with it at the appropriate time. In other announcements, Home Fellowship holds this evening at 6 o'clock. Singles Fellowship holds tomorrow at 6 p.m. Bible study continues this Tuesday at 6 p.m. while prayer meeting follows at 6.45 p.m. Shower service holds on-site and online this Thursday at 9 a.m. Don't forget the daily webinar prayers holds Monday to Friday from 11.30 p.m. to 12.15 a.m. Remember to drop by the multipurpose hall that is on your way out of the auditorium for your blood pressure check after the service. Now, if your birthday or wedding anniversary was last week or is today, please rise as we rejoice with you. This is the day the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. So all those who are celebrating their birthday, their wedding anniversaries, please copy Pastor D, whose birthday it was in the last week, and be upstanding, please. I want to see all those whose birthdays, wedding anniversaries, were between last Sunday and today. God bless all of you. Our very dear, inimitable Pastor D had his birthday sometime in the last week. And we say that the Lord will replenish your oil. The grace upon your life will multiply and multiply. And for the rest of us, whose birthdays it was in this spirit. This is the least you will ever be. Joyfully enter the best year of your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. And for those whose wedding anniversaries were over the same period, we want to say that the Lord will renew the joy, the fire, in your marriage. He will do divine organolepsis to your relationships and the honeymoon years will not even compare with it. Now those who are visiting us for the first time, could you stand up please if you have, if this is the first time that you're coming to Fountain, can we see you stand up? We want to be able to welcome you with a special fountain welcome. Tremendously welcome. This is a group of people who are the best people in the world. This is the church where God dwells. So we are glad from the bottom of our hearts to receive you. We want you to come again and again and again and again. And we want you to be part of us. As you can see, we have plenty of room to spare. So welcome. 
And we love to see you again and again. Now, God is always speaking to us. And whenever he speaks, the words that he speaks, their spirit and their life. I got into church just as the choir, our great Grace Levites, were doing Omema. That's an Igbo song. All it simply means that God is good. All he does is good. And so we have a beautiful promise, as always. And it's found in Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 20. Now I'm going to look, read it from Amplified Version. It says, At that time I will bring you in. And at that time, I will gather you, for I will give you honor and praise among all peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says Yahweh. Someone may rightly be wondering, you want to gather us from where and for what? So let's just backpedal to 17. Yahweh, your God, is among you. A mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with joy. He will calm you in his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. 18. I will remove those who grieve about the appointed feasts from you. They are a burden and a reproach to you. 19. Behold, at that time I will deal with all those who afflict you. And I will save those who are lame. And gather those who were driven away, I will give them praise and honor, whose shame has been in all the earth. This is slightly wordy, but if I want to summarize it, this is the kernel, this is the theme of what this passage is saying. God is saying that I just want to bless you. I just want to do you or memma. He is saying that whatever may have afflicted you, I want to remove it. He's saying that whatever may have caused you problems, I want to change it. I want to love you with gladness. C can you understand that kind of language? He wants to love you with gladness. Now, why does he want to do all this? It's not because you or I have done anything outstanding. He wants to do all this because you are his child in Christ Jesus. You know, many times we, we probably have this mentality of God as some super headmaster. He's short on smiles. He's long on instructions. But this is the reverse. God just wants to gather you to bless you. He wants to do for you things you have never known. Great and wonderful things you've never seen, you've never heard. He wants to take you to places you've never been, to heights you have never known. And what's more, he wants to gather Nigeria also. Because you and I live in Nigeria. And because we also Spend what time we do praying for this country. God is also going to gather Nigeria to bless Nigeria. To remove all the reproach of the years. The denigration of the years. The problems that are chronic. He wants to replace them to love Nigeria with gladness. And this is the set time he's going to do it. So I want us to... Meditate on these thoughts. Rejoice in the hope these words bring. Because he's speaking from the throne of grace. As the individual fountaineers and as a corporate country, God wants to love us with gladness. Have that expectation. Have that outlook all the time. And I think this is a good point. The choir wants to help us celebrate this. Hallelujah, no go finish for our mouths in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 
go finish you. Hallelujah, I'm not go finish you, my mouth. So. Hallelujah, I'm not go finish you, my mouth. So. Oh, oh, oh. Hallelujah, I'm not go finish you, my mouth. So. Hallelujah, I'm not go finish you, my mouth. So. In the name of Jesus. Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Let your hallelujah equal your expectation today. Hallelujah. hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. God has been good to us. Somebody has a thanksgiving to at least offer. Somebody has some special praises to offer today. Somebody just, somebody was coming and said, if only we can get everybody to just worship the whole day today. If nobody is thinking that way, Pastor Dako is thinking that way. So we celebrate you, Pastor Dako. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's a young, old man. Or the old, young man. Which is better? Uh, come on. The young, old man, the old, young man. The young old man. No, I don't agree with you. He's the old young man. He's a young man. Come and appreciate God for Pastor Dan. We give God the glory. Amen. We are blessed with very, very many beautiful and wonderful ministers in church. And we are ever grateful to God. Hallelujah. You know, it's the end of the month. That's why if there's any reason to thank God, I think um, that alone is enough. That God has brought us this far. And we are looking forward to a greater 2023. He's such a good God. <clears throat> so, um, yes, Thanksgiving. And then um, the new month is on, I think, Wednesday? A month of the Holy Spirit too. You say, but why? Because you begin to understand that everything begins and ends there. The whole of life. The whole of creation. <laughs> Somebody just praise God. Yeah. And when God is out to do something unusual with your life, he directs your steps towards the Holy Spirit. That's it. And so we are grateful. We are privileged. So fasting and praying now. Uh, praying and fasting will begin on Monday. This Monday, so that by the fifth of January we are ready, of oh, February, we are ready for February. In the name of Jesus, even now we are ready in Jesus' name, but be much more ready by the fifth of February in Jesus' name. Why don't you lift your hand up in the name of Jesus? That by the fifth of February, some things will be so clear to me. 
that I will know that I know that I know that God is God and is God alone. Whether that is affects me personally, my home, my marriage, my children, my ministry, Nigeria, by the feet of February, there are certain things I will know. And I trust God for it in the name of Jesus. If you didn't say amen, that's all right. You just miss a privilege. God wants to share secrets with you. I'm telling you. After you must know who to vote, we must know who to vote for. You must know who to vote for. You think you go there and say, many, many, many more, many, many, many. God, God does share secrets. Will it be just like that? I don't know. Will it be like this, like this? I don't know. Ooh, I don't know. Will God do it? Yes. Let me say it again. Will it just be just like that? I don't know. Will it be like that, like that? I don't know. Will God do it? Yes. In the name of Jesus. Somebody help me say yes to the name of Jesus now. Yeah. Why are you keeping quiet? Whether you keep quiet, don't you keep quiet. That day will come. Are you will participate or not participate? Whether you participate or don't participate, you are participated. Once the election comes and go, you are participated. <laughs> then the results will now begin to rule you. Somebody shout, Amen. Yeah. Jesus is Lord. And God still rules in the affairs of. Okay. What next? You are ready today? I am ready. But much more than ever, the Holy Ghost is more prepared than me. So it's going to be a wonderful service. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Lord, we worship you. You are the King of glory. I know you are God, a never failing man. Oh. I know you are God, a never failing man. I know you are God, a never failing man. I never fail in man That's who you are You touch my life with your hands Impossibilities become possible At the mention of your name Every knee must bow Every tongue confess that you are Jehovah Yahweh Only in me, my, you are faithful O me woro mi ye yoro ya I can make it like you Oh, he owns the heaven, he owns the air, he owns the sea and everything within, he owns the power, he rules the world, you are so good, you are the covenant keeping God, he owns the heaven, he owns the heaven. He owns the sea, he owns the sea, and everything we be. He owns the power, he owns the power, he rules the world. You are so good, you are so good, you are the covenant keeping. He owns the heaven, he owns the heaven, he owns the earth. Yes, it is. 
Yeso no kuruya Hadi o ye gina ya na chiese Neli kwene luwa Shuku nani kibwa kakabo Hadi o ye gina ya na chiese
Amen. You may be seated. Somebody is hearing God very clearly for yourself. Please don't discourage it. He's talking to you, he's giving you instructions. He says to tell somebody, You are coming to a place where you begin to take me at my word. I will do what I said I will do. asking him questions. He says to tell you, I will do what I told you. I will do. I want you to put a demand on this week. By the fifth of this month, something should be made clear to you concerning you and your clients. I want you to please pray so I pray and pray. The counsel of God will stand for your life, for my life, for fountain, and of course for Nigeria. Nobody instructs him. Nobody guides him. Nobody directs him. He is God all by himself. Somebody has a word. Can you bring it forward?
Thank you very much. The mic for Pastor Blessing. not be afraid for I see your labor and I have come down within you to do that which I will essentially Amen Father, take all the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your visitations. And thank you for your word that you're about to uh, unleash for us today. We know we'll rise out of this place better than we came in. In the name of Jesus. We worship you, we adore you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, choir. God bless you. Amen. We're still... We're still getting to understand the person of the Holy Spirit better. Um, most of us have good knowledge, as it were. But you see, you can never get up to say, I know everything about him. With every new day, based on your desire, you find another dimension of him. Or you get to understand him, to understand him better in certain areas that you think you've already, you already did, and it will become more helpful to you. And the bottom line is that it will improve your lot in life and glorify God in your life. Amen. So, um, last Sunday, we were looking at the, uh, Romans chapter 8, if you remember. And we're looking at it from, um, yeah, Paul's experience and Paul's, um, the journey he has, I mean, he had traveled. And Paul never ceases to amaze me. Please permit me. To, he never ceases to amaze me the way I told those who came for the leadership thing, because we're looking for a model for leadership, was to encourage them to go to the best leadership schools all around the world, which is good. What we are to do is to just add some, fill in some gaps by the grace of God. And those who have not had the opportunity to go, we believe we'll give them some leads on what to pursue and be better leaders by God's grace. 
So I remember we were looking for a model in the Bible, and of course, it came out clear to me that if we are looking for one model, the only model I can just put, I mean, the best of all models is Paul. The best of leadership schools in the world, go look at their template, you'll be shocked. It goes back to Paul. It's like leadership was such, such that everywhere he moved, he didn't just establish Christianity, he established <laughs> A system of leadership that is still effective today, that affected today's civilization. It's from the Bible. He demonstrated the fact that the earth is the Lord and the fullness there of the world and all that dwells within. So it becomes very interesting that now that we are talking about the Holy Ghost, I find the righteousness of all very incredible. And one of the things that the Holy Ghost told us there was this. He never, he never, he never flocked with Jesus in his lifetime. He was an enemy. He was a, not just a protagonist. He was, an, he, was the, he was a gang leader against whatever Jesus stood for. So he demonstrated honestly to the tilt. The reason he came and what he did. No man ever lived that can give us exactly the blueprint of what God planned for Paul to do on earth, which he did. No man, I mean, Jesus to do on earth, which he came to do, like Paul has revealed it to us. And for him to boldly say, I didn't learn this from any man. And he told us exactly how he got it. He said I was alone for three years. First for, for nine months, then three years, then later 17 years. In the desert. A journey that started with just one encounter on the way to Damascus. I've had many encounters with God. Just one. He, he later had maybe a thousand or even so many. So encounters were too much. He wasn't dead, and yet he saw heaven. He said, He wrote, Ha! See, it demonstrated what God can do through a man, through the Holy Ghost. I know what makes me, what makes it very interesting is that you are qualified. He can do the same and much more with you, even now. That's what keeps on blowing my mind. And I'm like, God, help me. Ah. Help me. And if I'm hard of hearing, help my heart of hearing. I, I need grace. So we looked at the letter of Paul last week and we brought up something which, of course, we could all identify with mindset, as it were. Remember, it was in Romans chapter 8, in verse 6, 5 and 6, particularly. We were looking at it from the beginning and we saw him struggle. And that really gave me a lot of, um, <laughs> a lot of confidence in my own pursuit. He said, What do you mean? Paul struggled, man. Ah, to, the, to, to the point that he said, Whoa, yeah, kill, kill all day. What is me? <laughs> and then God said, well, no, Let me show you. And everything will stand. And of course, you saw the way he, he, the first statement after that, he said, I thank my Lord Jesus Christ, you know. He now got into chapter 8 and he says, <laughs> There is there for now. No, no, no living, dead, or yet to be born, that will stand to accuse me before I know. So no condemnation. He now screamed because the law of the spirit of life, that was the discovery. 
income. Oh, has sent me. Oh, boy. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm free to be all that he wants me to be. Can't you see where we're going? You are free to be everything and you can be and you will be. In the name of Jesus, that's where we are. That's why this year is different. We know there are limiting factors. In some cases, envy from colleagues and peers. From community. From evil siblings. And then, of course, Agents of the devil that just don't, they just don't want it to be good for anybody. But I am free. The law of the spirit. He, that was a discovery. That was my motivation when I put together what we say at the end of the service. But see, as human as we are, it has become ritual. We just don't even know what we say anymore. There has been no service in this church that we didn't quote it. I had a conviction then. So I'm asking God to have mercy on me. Everything I put together, I, I, I had a conviction before we started service. You are aware? Yeah. Yeah. Well, are we aware? Yeah. And that's why I'm certain that we are in a good time, in Jesus' name. Mm-hmm. So, and in that statement, it was personal. It was very, very personal. So, quick recap for two minutes so I can get into what I want to share today. Romans chapter 8. Let me turn to verses 5 and 6. For those who are living according to the flesh, okay, yeah, give me amplified, okay, that's all right. For those who are living according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh, which gratify, go ahead, the body. But those who are living according to the spirit, go ahead, set their minds on the things of the spirit, his will and purpose. Now, the mind of the flesh is death, both now and forever. Because it pursues sin. But the mind of the spirit is life and peace. The spiritual well-being that comes from walking with God both now and forever. Can you give me these same scriptures in TPT? Quickly, quickly, quickly. I thank you. I like that amplifier, but I'll come back there. Yeah. Those who are motivated by the flesh only pursue what benefits. I think it's making it clear. Okay. Themselves. But those who live by the uh, impulses of the Holy Spirit are motivated to pursue what? Spiritual realities. Paul speaking. For the mindset of the flesh is death. But the mindset controlled by the Spirit finds life and peace. Okay. Then by the time you jump to verse 9, I won't take too much of this because you pick last Sunday's message. Look at verse 9. Uh, keep it there. Let me read. Let me read. King James. Yeah. Verse 9 says, But you are not in the flesh. I needed to say that and to remind you that 
if you are born again, uh, given that maybe not everybody here is born again, or not everybody hearing me is born again, we are not trying to sugar pad anything. We are telling you the truth the way it is, as it affects us and everybody, because we are looking for the best for you in life and in eternity. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. So if truly you are born again, can you hear me? You have the spirit of God in you. Does anybody understand that? If you understand, you say amen. So by implication from this scripture... You are not in the flesh. So, and that's where confession comes. How come I want to do everything that the unbeliever does? How come I, uh, and even when I know it's contrary? Yeah. See, the truth is, you are denying yourself. You are changing yourself. You are superior. Spiritually and otherwise. So, what we are doing is trying to make you understand who you are. It doesn't matter what you don't have or what you have. It doesn't matter where they have, where they have ridiculed you or not. No, no, no. When you get to know who you are in him, I said the sons of them that persecute you will come and lick the dust off your feet. It's a matter of time. It will be a disaster of a lifetime for you to compromise your lofty position because of the present. Yeah, pleasure and chicken change. And that's not to say that you don't rise up here. You are right, but he will be glorified. Pastor, what about this? You just follow me for a while. You realize that that question will be unnecessary. Okay. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of God, he is not his. So that makes it clear that if you are born again, you have the Spirit. So that means that whatever trouble you are going through, whatever inadequacies, whatever failures, whatever this, you are carrying the Spirit of God to go, to go do it. You are carrying his Spirit to fail. You are carrying his Spirit. He doesn't fail. What if you suddenly remember, remember who you are? Your attitude, your mindset will change, your attitude will change straight away. The things that climb your head, free of charge, you begin to look at you with a little bit of it. That's why the Bible says ignorance, for, ignorance is the reason for most of our failures. For lack of knowledge, my people perish. Have you ever been in trouble before? Someone, someone just looks for your trouble. You're walking through, you, 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 because on that day your car broke down and somebody gave you a ride to maybe this place and quickly you want to get there to pick a taxi or something. And then some area boy started looking for trouble. And they will make jest of you, they will try to pull your shirt and say, hey, come on. Hey. Will you for goodness sake, for any reason, stop and take off your shirt to fight them? You have reduced yourself to their level. And they will beat you at their own game. And yet, you can send the whole of them to jail with one word. You can change all their lives within a year if you, if you want to. But when you forget who you are, you swim in the same murky water with them. But it still doesn't stop the fact that you are reality. That the Spirit of God is in you. It applies even to sickness, to poverty, to failure, to fear, to ridicule. That's why we could get to that place when we were reading about Jesus Christ. They ridiculed him, but he refused to be ridiculed. What if he, did, what if he had turned around to fight them? What if he had caught fire to finish them? Would he have fulfilled the purpose of which he came? And the interesting thing is that those who are standing there will say he's a fool, he doesn't know anything. If he's the king of Jesus, why didn't you do this? They always know better than you and the God of your destiny. They always do. 
but they know nothing. But how can you prove that you know nothing except as you know who you are? Waiting for time to play his role. It's a let patience have its full effect. It will make you entire wanting nothing. Let's understand. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is what? Life, what? So you carry life inside of you. The mindset you carry is life and peace. Let me read it now. Let me read it now again. Quick, quick, quick. Now, if anyone... But you are not the flesh, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So that settles that for us permanently. Many other scriptures you can refer to to see this there. I mean, hallelujah. Remember, we looked at it. We share life with Christ. Glory be to God in the highest. And First Corinthians in chapter, yeah, I'll just quickly give you that. You can read it up at home. Chapter 6, I believe. Yes, yes, yes. Chapter 6. Is this 6? Yeah, is it 16? Let me confirm. Is that 16, 12, and 16? Yeah. 6, 17. Thank you. 6, 16, 6, 17. Can you give me 6? Yeah. God bless you. Somebody has been doing some serious studies. Look at 6, 16. 6, 16 first. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a hallow? It's one body with her. For the two, go back, go back a bit. Has to come on, which is true. But let's go back a little bit. Go back. Exactly. Go back a bit. A bit, yeah. Okay, go to 15. Do you not know that your bodies, your bodies, your bodies, not your soul, not your soul, not your soul, not your soul, your bodies, okay, are members of Christ. Shall I then take the member of Christ and make them members of a harlot. Because the day I became born again, I started sharing life with Jesus. And in this same chapter, it says, my body and his body become one. My spirit and his spirit become one. So. so go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Or do you not know that he who is joined to the Holy Lord becomes one flesh? Let me say, husband, and they will become one. Yes, they will become one, yes, spiritually, but the consummation is never done until they sleep together. So they are one. You know, I, when I was in service, I had this very good friend, I won't mention his name, he asked him, he will come and look for me, he will look for him, we speak. We speak the language where house are So he fell at me, man. So he will see me, you see young ladies, I'm some go past. He said, I'm not even looking. I say, ah, how do you know I'm not looking? He said, maybe you're not seeing. I said, that's the problem. I'm looking, I'm seeing. So what's that supposed to mean? So one day, a young lady walked past and greeted, and he was so, he was so admitted, he said, he I said, are you chasing that woman? He said, Haram. I said, what do you mean Haram? I said, no, he had come to me. He said, he wanted to come to my house on a visit. I said, that would be fine. He said, he wants to bring a lady. Yeah, that's it. I said, no, I won't agree. I wasn't married then. I said, no, I won't agree. He said, why are you like this now? I said, no. 
I said, is it legit? You are going to try to marry? I know you have a wife, but you guys marry many. Ah, he said, no, 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 no. I said, was it that lady in the morning you are greeting? He just said, haram. I said, why is he haram? He said, married woman. Haram. Evil unbelievers. Evil Muslims. Rascally boy. He said, haram. When you, the spearhead of the covenant blessings in the generation, don't know who you are, we have a problem. I read in the Bible. It says, man and woman has problems. I mean, sorry, have problems. And the woman, and they separate. That's Old Testament, though. Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament, Old Testament. We need to talk through it in the New Testament. Because there it's regimented. Is it? And somebody else sleeps with a woman, say you cannot marry her again. But again, women will argue with you and you are right. To say that's chauvinistic. What about the man? And he married again. So that's why we talk through it with the Holy Ghost in the New Testament. So it's a whole bunch of questions. One day we'll have a seminar. We'll answer all these questions in Jesus' name. I promise you. God is teaching us. So. For a cure, it doesn't mean that God is not with us. He's teaching us. Everybody can make all the noise they want in the social media. That's their business. You get into the world and the Holy Ghost is there to teach you. But why am I saying this? You are entrenched with him. The day you go born again, honestly, you enter into him. That's why Paul will boldly say, it is in him I live, I move, and I have my pain. And he was speaking to the authorities, defending himself. <laughs> and that's why Paul, too, we say things, the same Paul, we say things like this idea of the Christian church. He said, do you know that the fullness of the Godhead, bodily, bodily, that is physically, tangibly, dwells in Jesus Christ. When you see Jesus, you see God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, all together, you can get all of them from there. He said, and do you know that I, I am in them, complete, go. So I am in him, he's in me. So don't, uh, is, it, is, it, is it third John? No, 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 first John. I think chapter 3. It says, no, you see that. That greater is he than me. Then he, see, the concept of he being in you must be settled once and for all. Then you now go back with that understanding and go and read 7 and, uh, Romans, Romans 7 and 8. Things will settle for you. Having said that, I want to concentrate a little bit today on his prayer in third John chapter, sorry, 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 Ephesians chapter 3, from verse, uh, I'll take it from verse 16, quickly, Ephesians chapter 3, or from five, verse 14, quick, I, am I communicating? I pray to God to help me. I really believe God for fountaineers this year, for me, and for fountaineers this year. Yeah. For this reason, he's been talking, and like I said last week, for your study's sake, Ephesians summarized everything that Jesus came to do for humanity. It's so, such a summary that yet, and yet, captured everything. <clears throat> you start with Ephesians, so you will read the whole Bible. And the first three chapters settled everything. By the time you are entering chapter four, he's beginning to go towards instructions. How you can make this now be in your physical life. How you can reduce it from just being an abstract to reality. So for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, uh, from whom the whole family in heaven and on earth is named. 
we can stay there and say to this your fatherhood. You see, no religion calls God father. They just don't understand it. In the Old Testament, you see the word father mentioned very few times, reference to God, very few times. In the whole of New Testament, oh, God is father. Jesus came straight and said, my father, my father, my father, my father. You see, it has made me see, it has made me respect certain men of God. Man, you think he's fun. Papa, the way you'll be preaching, you say, ah, daddy said, I'm like, hey? You think, if you're not, you just think, just, you think he, he, the guy is joking. He's not joking. He knew something. So, ah, my daddy said. Ah, daddy. Like, ah. I know something. Baba knows something else. <laughs> Jesus came with it. And the whole of the New Testament. The beginning of a victory in life is to know that, ah, yes, I have a father. Oh, my. He is king of kings and Lord. Oh, yes, I have a father. Remember, Jesus made a statement. He said, I will not leave you as an orphan. Who is an orphan? No father, no mother. You are, more, you are, you are sucking, you are saying. Say no, I won't leave you. I will come to you. I'll be a father to you and a mother to you. Come on. You have a father. Anyway, as the father of Lord Jesus Christ, he's in the womb, all the families. Can you give me a big chunk of this history? <laughs> Whatever you have to be looking at me. That he will grant you according to the riches of his glory. To be strengthened with my through his spirit in the inner man. That just captures everything we've been trying to say. Ah. I will look in another version quickly. Because the next time that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. And you being rooted and grounded in the law, may be able to contempt all the saints, the length and the breadth, the depth and the height, and to know the love of Christ that passes human understanding, and that you might be filled with all. Filled with all. Filled with all. I can be filled with all. Let's, let's, give me TPT quickly. Of course, give me amplified. Give me amplified. I beg you in the name of Jesus, go and study. All I can do is just introduce you to it. Honestly, until you study it yourself. Look at it. Yeah, for this reason, grasping the greatness of this plan by which Jews and Gentiles are joined together in, uh, in Christ. I bow my knees in reverence before the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives his name, God the first and ultimate Father. May he grant you out of the riches of his glory, so you can see the source, out of the riches of his glory to be strengthened and spiritually energized with what? Power, okay. Through what? His spirit. Where? In your inner self. Uh, in dwelling your innermost being and personality. So I want him to energize you in the inner self. Uh -huh. Go back. Go back, go back, go back, go back. Uh -huh. Through his spirit in your inner self, that is, in dwelling your innermost being and personality. Can you see what we're saying? I'm asking for strength to affect your personality. I'm asking for miraculous powers from the Holy Spirit 
to make you like Jesus in your personality. <laughs> and that's the first point. We we'll tried to look at it two, two, weeks, two weeks back now. We we'll tried to look at it on Thursday. I said, well, it's out of his riches in glory. If you, if you came to me and I want to help you because you have a project or you have a need, I will give you according to my wealth standard, my level of money. So if you went to uh, Dangote, except he has a spirit of giving like I have, and, and if he does, so where I'm giving you 10, he may, give you, he may be giving you 10,000. It's according to what you have. God says, I will give you according to, he will give you that, like say God will give you according to his riches and glory. So you can rise out from this place a totally different man. And by the way, I'm not pressing that much. You know what I read about someone? He said, if I can work on your mindset now, by the time you rise out of this place, you see life differently. Yes, you believe in the new world. True. And that's what the Bible is trying to do for us, all of us. You'll be free from every oppression. That would mean that oppression won't still fly, but it will have no, it will have no place to land as far as you are concerned. In your Bible, shy. That's it. You, 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 you don't see I'm finished. You don't feel holding back anymore. Huh. So he said, we strengthen with might according to his spirit. By his spirit in your inner man. Now watch this. God wants to do something with you. Because if you read down, by the time you get to 20, verse 20, it says that unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ever think or imagine. All your creativity, all your visions, all your dreams, that's from your mind. God will surpass it. But how? See where it starts from. You're in a man. You're in a man. God wants to change you to be like him and to do exploits on earth. You're in a man. That's where he's going for. <laughs> he's an inner man. Now that you're born again, wow, Father, grant them to be strengthened with might, give them miracle working power, energize them on the inside. And don't forget that this was a prayer. So if you are a smart person, you begin to say, I can get this, I can get to this place through prayer. I only need to see it in the Bible. That is my upon my knees. That is my power. Do you know that you can be anointed for healing and you lay on some people, bow, 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 and you are sick and you can be healed? Because that's not for you. But can you be healed from the anointing? Yes. How? To the inner man. Thank you. That's a picture. From the inner man. When you lay hands on people, things happen. But you are looking forward to lay hands on you. It's good. Let people lay hands on you. But what if there's no way to lay hands on you? The spirit of creation is inside of you. The healing virtues of God is inside of you. Ah. And see Paul. He said the secret is that let the Holy Ghost that is there let him walk on your inner man. You know what I read? I read that, look, look, look. If we were looking for the primary function or the primary reason the Holy Ghost is here or is in you. One, to reveal Jesus to you. Two, to reveal Jesus in you. That's all. You can see him and see him in you. You're a changed person. Mm, I feel the rush of the spirit. It wouldn't matter whatever the devil is trying to do through, through his agents or through people or through circumstances. 
So, it says, that he will grant you to be strengthened with mighty inner man by the Holy Spirit. Result, Christ will dwell in your heart by faith. You will appear, they will see Jesus. If you should confront you, you will approach it like Jesus will do. I'm not going into details. All these things you can go study on your own. But if I'm just talking about prayers, and where I'm, going from, where, where I'm coming from here is this, your spirit man is most important. But how does it, how does it match with what we are saying today? That's what the Holy Ghost has come to do in you. He's come to change you. He's come to make slaves, kings. He's come to give life to the dying. Because it's very easy to assume that, no, this is spirit. The physical is different. It is not. Don't you see that your spirit and your spirit is one? Don't you see that your body and his body is one? That Christ may dwell in your heart by faith. Go ahead. And that we now begin to comprehend very clearly the dimensions of his faith. In all dimensions. Perfect understanding. Then that may be filled with all the fullness of God. I'm jumping because of time. Can you see? But where does it start from? The Holy Spirit and your spirit. So now, can I have one volunteer? I will say, if I say something about your character, don't be offended. Oh. If I say she's fiesty, but she's gentle. Do you know her? You know her? Do you know why she's standing here and I'm standing here? She's physically alive. We are both physically alive. Why are we physically alive? Because our real ones are inside of us. The difference between us and those who have been buried is because the real people left their body. Yeah. Where is their bodies? They went to Jesus, just of, of our own family. What about unbelievers? They are where the Bible says they are. So I said that to say this. So you know her by who you know her to be. So when we call her name, she responds from who she is, from the life in her. But you see, she's born again. There are two spirits inside of her. If there's an unbeliever here and comes to stand by her, she has two spirits, that one has one spirit. She has an edge because that second spirit is the Holy Spirit. The fact that she has the Holy Spirit, though, does not make her win much more. You say, why? Except as she understands that she has the Holy Spirit in her. And the reason the Holy Spirit is in her is because her spirit man has been regenerated. Though I'm an unbeliever, she's a believer. We both have spirit, soul, and body, both of us. Right? What is happening is that her spirit is regenerated. Mine is not. So even then, she's still superior to me. But now that she understands that her spirit is regenerated, and that spirit and her spirit, I mean, the Holy Spirit and her spirit are now one, honestly, she only needs to be a little more daring. She will to excel. Much more in life. Is somebody hearing me? So is every believer. You are a carrier of the spirit of God, the spirit of creation, the spirit that regenerated you, the spirit that is still maintaining everything on earth. And you know what the Bible says about that spirit? It flows. Spirit flows. 
It's like this is spirit working like this. We're trying to run. It's just, and nothing can stop it. Nothing physical can stop it. So you know what the Bible says? Jesus said it. He said, because you believe in me, <laughs> from the spirit, will flow. What will flow? No triples. I can hear you. Rivers of what? Rivers of life. What if she knows that? And she's walking with that consciousness. Not arrogantly, but confidently. Everything created will bow. So you talk of walking by faith. God bless you. Man, she has gone. I'm she's thinking, so this is my capacity. I have this potential. I'm going to exploit it in the name of Jesus. It will work for anything and everything in your life in Jesus', Jesus name. I, I want to look at that same scripture that I said you'll be filled with the fullness of God. I'll stop there because of time. If you look at it in Amplified, yes, or, 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 yes. it says, it says, and be filled with the fullness, creating a flood. <laughs> Let me just complete this for you. From, uh -huh. Go back a bit. And that you may come to know. Hello, church. Are you here with me? To know practically. See what I'm saying? To know practically through personal X. Uh, through personal experience, the love of Christ, which, quick, 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 which first surpasses mere knowledge without experience, that you may be filled, I mean, fill up throughout your being to all the fullness of God, so that you may, this thing is stopping me, you may have the rich, I mean, the richest experience of God's presence in your lives completely filled come on and what I can't hear you I can't hear you I can't hear you for that we woo why won't you flow one man was talking he said I got into an impossible seemingly impossible situation I got there and was like God God I remember it has to be only ghost anyway he said, but what I didn't realize is that the moment I entered, the atmosphere changed. And I just advised and I just counseled and I prayed with him. And you see, pity was trying to come back. I said, no, 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 I didn't come to pity. I came with, with God himself. And I left. The following night, they called her. I said, he's standing, he's walking. He said, he wants to see you. And he said, you know, but I have to come, that he will come to where you are. He said, I just came, I went in with a knowing that I carry something. I carry God in me. And he flows. He flows. He flows. The Bible says when he comes in there, say, if you didn't have this precious you say, we're quickening your physical body. How? He flows. That's how you can get healed. From yourself. I'm talking of the Holy Spirit and the Spirit within. It's the Spirit of wisdom. It's the Spirit of favor. It is the healing Spirit of God. Hallelujah. I have to stop because it's said it's two minutes to nine. I hope I introduce something today. I believe God I have. You are special. You are not just anointed. He has come to make his home in you. I began to look at the lives of all the great men and women that God. They knew this. They knew this thing. They took time to understand it. No wonder their life was like on a cruise. They just went. 
May the word eternal will come to a place like this. Just saying, let's praise God. You say, as far, honestly, as far as our people will be, people will be, people will be reacting. She came to know something. You won't be fighting with ants anymore. I'm talking about some spirits, ants and cockroaches. Are dead. Many years ago, as I closed, it was a bit of matter. My friend is in Canada now. The parents were working in the village. Well, the railways and they lived in the bit of matter at the quarters there. And they attended St. Jude. So in the evening, the women have a, had a fellowship. So I stopped by with my friend, and my mother said she was going to fellowship. I we went with her. We were SUs anyway. So then they brought this man preaching in Yoruba, and he was preaching from uh, chapter 15 of the book of um, I'm the Vine, we are the branches. John, he got to a place. The way he did his mouth and pointed his finger, I will never forget. He spoke in Yoruba. He said, don't you know? How can you be a branch on the vine? Do you think it's a different life that flows in the branch, I mean, the vine from the branch? You have the life of God in you. It was screaming. I'm like, ah, 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 ah. I'll never forget. Go to bed tonight. Still let the life of God rise in me. And do what you what he sent to do. But don't forget, every blessing you get from God, it comes through your spirit, man. Did you hear me? Every healing you're going to get from God will come through your spirit, man. That's God's contact to your entire being. That's why the first thing that happens is that he comes and regenerates you. Bam! Then he comes in a baptism and empowers you. If you are not regenerated, there cannot be place for the Spirit of God to, to stay, to live. <laughs> I like that boy. <laughs> he just took a look at him and he Hey, hey, hey. He just enjoying himself. You can't disturb him. He knows something that we think that he's too childish about. But we know something that the devil is in trouble with. I say congratulations. In the name of Jesus. I know you practice this thing this week. I said, I'm going to know it's not just me. I'm an, ambas- I'm an embassy. I'm an ambassador and yet an embassy. I carry God on the inside. He flows through me. When I'm saying hello to somebody, they don't understand what it means. The, devil, the devils and the demons around them understand what, they, what it means. Uh, glory be to God in the highest. The late Papa Ezekiel, in those days, he, he, he had some challenges at the time. He will, he will enter a place to preach. Say, ha, hallelujah, before he even talks. The moment they introduce him, standing up from there, the whole place is scattered. Some are crying, some are running. Flow! If something will stop the flow, it's your mindset. And where does that come from? Knowledge. That's why last Sunday we said that if there's something that will stop the flow of the Spirit of God in a man's life, it's his or mindset. There's a spiritual mindset, there's a carnal mindset. So don't say that I struggle, I can't do this, and say you want to do it. Well, you know, we are beginning to project that first. Shall we rise? I want you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ with what you've heard today. This was a prayer after all, by the grace of God. I want you deliberately for the next two minutes, two minutes, two minutes, two minutes. Please don't get distracted. Just say, Holy Ghost, help me, help me these two minutes. Help me, help me. Every area of shortfall in my life, 
every area where I'm yet to step into who I am and what I have from Jesus Christ, no matter how dear it is to me, and no matter how big or, too, or, or, or big that I, I, Holy Spirit, I give, you, I give you permission, step in for me. Move me in the name of Jesus. Even where I think I have explained, I want to explain something. No, 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 no. Holy Ghost, oh yeah, Jumilo. You understand me more than I know myself. Holy Spirit. He says, I will pray that you be strengthened with might in your inner man. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Strength in my inner man. Strength in my inner man. Strength in my inner man. In Jesus' name I pray. Pastor, how do I handle this thing? Quickly, number one. The word. Remember? Um, yeah, yeah. Just write it down for your studies. Yeah. The scripture that says that you are changed from glory to glory. I think it's First Corinthians three eighteen. How you keep on looking into the law of liberty, beholding us in the mirror, you are getting transformed into His image. You cannot get there and sustain it without the word. Colossians chapter 3. He said, let the word of God be richly. That's the starting point. I'm so busy, so I don't read the Bible anymore. I only hear in church. It, it won't help you. Find time for the word. Romans 12, 1 and 2. Say, but be, do not, be, be not, what, do not conform, but be what? Transformed. How? By the renewing of your mind. How? The word. They don't just leave you like that, that now you know, let me, no, no, no. If you observe, we all knew at the time, we were jumping, then you, then, ah, you go back, ah. mind your inner man. Someone, blessed is the man that walks on the council, watch your company. People advise people wrongly. They take them to uh, my waste your time. Oh, you waste your time there. Oh, this fantinia, waste your time, waste your time. I'll take you to one baba there. Sometimes I'm amazed. People you don't expect. You take them to Baba. Not Baba in the in Christendom. You will do Kurube for them. And they'll come to church they say, Hallelujah. Who is this evil? And some women have the audacity. I want to give testimony. Ah, imagine more. I beg you in the name of Jesus, don't try. You know where you got it from? Keep quiet. Don't come and tell us that you have a testimony. And you know we went to some place. You say you went to Orioke. It wasn't Orioke. You went. They gave you something to. And you know it. The one you hide in your wardrobe. Because you don't know who you are. A king making himself a slave. God forbid. He said, we like a tree planted by rivers of water. Bring forth his fruit in the season. <laughs> his leaf also shall not wither. And whatever he does shall prosper. Somebody's testimony is by next Sunday. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. It's why he said that I heard. He said, what you are saying, many will practice it. And I will prove myself. So the word, number two. Don't hide it, don't hold it. I've just discovered, me and share here, I won't share it because of people. I want to share, ah, you know, you will lose it. 
Share it. Let them know what you heard. Let them know what you did. Show the proof. That's how to be his witness. Confess the word. Declare the word you declared and declare the results you get. Let Jesus be glorified. It will multiply everywhere. You'll be shocked that many people that have that kind of need will be looking for you. Study the word. Don't hold his blessings. Number three. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit. He is the, he is the man. Oh, or he's the personality. He's the one behind it all. It's you. Ah. Fellowship with him. It's not every time you come, you say, God, give me, give me, give me. Just say the Bible say, I just want to thank God for you. Holy Spirit, I want to thank God for you. Holy Spirit. Ha! Ah! You are too much. You'll be shocked. When you're alone, you are talking to him that way. You'll be shocked. I'm not joking. You'll be shocked. We don't live by sight. He will touch you. You will know. <laughs> I pray for unusual fellowship. With the Holy Ghost. I pray for you. You know, Paul prays in prayer. So that, I say that the love of God, the grace of God, I mean, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of those be yours. I'm praying that that fellowship will become yours much more than ever in the name of Jesus. You will crave him. I will crave him. Ah. He says to tell somebody that now you are hearing this, you say, no, God help me. He said, you lift up your eyes. You see all of them coming towards you. Amen. All the ones you think you have lost. And much more. The earth is the Lord and the flesh of the world and all that dwells with. Father, take all the glory. And don't forget, this thing began from prayers. So, how do you put it to practice? Pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. For the Holy Ghost to strengthen you. Ha! We give him praise. If you are here, you are not born again. That's the starting point. The first thing the Holy Ghost comes to do is to regenerate you. Change your perspectives to life. Launch into a new cosmos. And then he comes to reveal himself to you constantly and teaching you. You'll be a different person. And yet, in a generation like this, so if you're making that decision, I'd like you to pray, pray this prayer with me. Church, join them. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me, dying in my place. Cleanse me from my sins. Fill me with your spirit. Henceforth, you use me for your glory. In your most precious name, I have prayed. Amen. Father, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you for the privilege of being us today. And we believe that by your spirit, we will return with testimonies. Father, keep these ones and use them for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We bless the offering. We give it cheerfully. We give it because you are, you are, you are too good to us. And we know that we are living here to collide with blessings again. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray.
shall we rise? Just to remind you, fasting and praying begins tomorrow. It will be 9 to 10 every day. And if you miss it, you can always go back to, I think, TUM, Tower of Ministries, it will be there where you can begin. Yes. And to remind you too, what we have just said is that the most important aspect of your life is your inner man, the hidden man of the heart. So keep your heart with all diligence. That is the seat of God, the seat of all creativity, the seat of all deliverances and blessings. Every spiritual blessing, they are yours. But that's where it comes from. I beg you. Take it seriously. Don't get too busy. Don't get too busy running for money, looking for money. Read the Bible. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And watch. But why this week, I beg you, I beg you. You know why I'm saying this? I was waking up this morning and somebody was saying, by, he was telling me, he was so confident, he was talking, he was giving me a date. I think I couldn't make any time. I said, well, whatever it is, I, I turn it around in Jesus' name. Our breakthroughs have come. Don't joke with this, Rico. I beg you in Jesus' name. If you have nothing, just shaka taka yaka ba 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 ku raba. At least this week, this week. Oh, I feel the fire. <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. The fellowship of the be yours and much more and mine in Jesus' name. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us. Say it for yourself. Follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the presence of God, conscious of the Holy Ghost forever. Amen. For the law of the see like Paul said it, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ has set me free from the law of sin and death. So sin will not have dominion over me because the same spirit, it flows, that raised Christ from the dead dwells inside of me. He quickens my mortal body to the glory of his holy name. God loves you specially. You are very, very wonderfully loved. I love you too. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in Jesus' name.